Hi you guys, welcome to Nine Links. This is your host, Alex. Uh, like always, pretty hot, and this year I think it's hot everywhere. So today I just want to share my experience with you on the uh, flowers fragrance level. Um, how, you know, some flower can smell really good at some, you know, it's the same plant. One guy can plant in his house and smells really good, and the other guys can plant in his house and smells like, you know, uh, really bad, smells bad. I don't want to use that word but uh, smells bad. So why some of the flowers, you know, is it the same plant? Why is it smells different? Like and from one area to another. So for, based on my experience, there are a lot of variables uh, contribute to uh, flower uh, fragrance. It's, you know, most people will think, uh, okay, I buy this plant, it bloom, you know what? If the flower comes out, it should be the same as everywhere. Uh, no, uh, there's a huge difference. A uh, couple things, very important that uh, will determine the, f the level and intensity of the fl uh, flower fragrance. Uh, number one, I would think it's sunlight. Number two, humidity. And number three, it's fertilizer. So, um, and also I think you could, there's another fourth uh, variable, it's um, genetic. Uh, why I say it's genetic is, um, le le okay, let's address the first, first one on the sunlight. Most plants, if they are full sun, like for example, white champaga is actually a full sun plant and in the humid region, but in the dry heat region, you cannot put it in a full sun. I will not risk it because it's dry and the heat is too intense, it'll burn the leaves. Unless maybe if you plant it on the ground and it got really used to the area, like California or, well wait, California is humid region. So in Texas, I think I mentioned on the, uh, my other videos, Texas soil is very alkaline, which means basically clay material, uh, clay type. Clay type is alkaline, it's not acidic. So white champaga is a big no-no in Texas if you want to plant it in the ground. So that's why I thought about when I moved down here, want to plant it in a, on the ground, but then I, you know what, it's not a big deal. Just keep it in a pot. We'll switch it in a new pot once I move into a new house. Some plants don't require, some plants don't require that much of a light intensity and if it's too much light the flower buds get busted means they form a flower bud and they turn brown right away and died all right um, some plants they require a lot of light without enough light they only bloom very little okay like white champaga for example and jasmine as well so that's one thing number one is the sunlight intensity and number two well kind of throw in, well, for, let's go back to number one real quick. Sunlight intensity kind of tied into temperature as well. So high temperature, and that is also tied into number two, which is humidity. High temperature, high sunlight, high humidity is the most optimal growing condition for any tropical plants. And their fragrance, well, I'll guarantee you, it's very intense. And the radius it goes out to, it's a really, what should I say, long distance. Because number two, it was the humidity. Down in Texas, I only been down here, you know, several months, and I noticed it's very dry down here. Um, the soil, if you don't water it, it turns like outside in the, in the grass. I don't know if you can see it right over here, right there, that little area right there. It's all cracking, and uh, you know, you see that. With water, it expands. Without water, it cracks. So it's really dry. So the humidity is that. Um, it's very, very, very low over here. So with that say, all the flowers, from my experience, that usually bloom, like for example, jasmine and white champaga. Look at white champaga. Let me show you how many flowers white champaga has. There's one, there's a two, and there's three, and there are more over here. Uh, you can see over there, four, five, and on the top, there are quite a few, quite a few more. Okay, and uh, usually uh, with that many flowers, if it were in my front patio, it will fill up my whole entire patio plus the neighbor side as well. But over here, I open up my patio door, I'm coming out, I barely smell them. I had to put them close to my nose in order to smell them. So the intensity really gets uh, reduced by at least three times. So, it, I mean, they still put out a lot of flowers, I mean, but the intensity drops the uh, fragrant intensity drops significantly. Like jasmine here, I had to sit next to it in order to smell it. 
and back at home, I can just walk out of the patio and smell them right away. So uh, that's uh, number two, that's the humidity. And the third is the uh, fertilizer. Now, believe it or not, a uh, organic fertilizer tend to give plants, uh, plants flower more frequent. Uh, reason being is they're organic, they're more bacterial invo involved. That I, I don't really sure, but you can, you can look it up. The reason I notice is that uh, down here, I no longer have rice water, the yucky smelling rice water. I've been using just uh, Texas tap water, no rain water as well, just Texas <laughs> tap water and a little bit of a slow release, well, depends on which plant you talk to. Some might use a lot of uh, fertilizer and some not. They all synthetic fertilizer. They no, no organic down here besides the uh, mean leaves that I use for mulch. So that really also reduced the fragrance intensely. And so sometimes there's like, for example, um, fig tree, all right, if fruits, People say that if you use organic fertilizer like chicken poops, worm casting, um, rice water and stuff, th when the fruits comes out, it's more sweeter and more natural tasting. But when you use synthetic fertilizer, the fruits is more uh, earthy. Uh, it's just not as, if you eat fruits, uh, figs all, uh, many times and you're a professional fig grower, you will tell right away it's a little bit off, but it's not that bad, but it's just a little bit off. And also, uh, some, per, uh, some people told me before, um, when you use uh, organic fertilizer, it helps with the uh, flower longevity. The flower will last a lot longer than uh, synthetic fertilizer because synthetic fertilizer is like a boost. Okay, flower out, flower gone, and flower dies. Uh, organic more flower out lasts a little longer than flower dies. You know, it's at that part, I don't know, I, you know, people told me about that. So I just want to share this experience with you. So when you move to a different region or different states, uh, make sure you consider, um, what should I say, the uh, humidity level, sunlight, temperature, and you know, uh, what's available over there. And w it really helps you uh, understand not all flowers just, you know, when they flower, it smells good. And the fourth one, which I throw, kind of throw in there, is I say genetic because if you make a cutting for my jasmine right now, and then you grow another jasmine, put it right next to mine, with all the conditions being the same, the flower should smell exactly the same. Now, let's say, to, for example, if a jasmine has a seed, and you plant that seed, and you grow a new jasmine out, then keep everything the same, just the seed difference. Your plant and my plant might not smell alike. Might smell a little bit intensely, um, intense than mine, or maybe no, uh, fragrance is a lot lower than mine. So that's why most of the time I also suggest when people buying plants, if you see a plant you like, ask for cuttings instead of asking for seeds. Asking for seeds, it takes a long time to grow and also there is no guarantee what the fragrance from the seed might be. It could be really good, it could be most of the time it's bad. Uh, anyway, all right, that's it for today guys. Um, thank you for watching my video and please click like and subscribe if you want to hear more in the future.